live coverage of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. the day when we commemorate the Nativity of the Lord is near at hand. This is a cause for rejoicing for all of us and at the same time the urgency to intensify our spiritual preparation for this great mystery so that we would be able to reap the spiritual benefits of truly celebrating the core of Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lay. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, no, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is none one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, may I now humbly invite you to focus your attention on the couple Zechariah and Elizabeth whose fidelity to God and His commandments deserves our emulation. Remember, in ancient Israel, barrenness or sterility, childlessness, these were considered signs of God's disfavor. And because Elizabeth and Zechariah were childless, they must have felt the negative perception of their community. In their hearts, they knew how people look at them. That was their situation. Yet despite that, have you noticed? Despite that, they obeyed the Lord and His commandments. So much so that the New Testament describes Elizabeth and Zechariah as blameless in the sight of God, observing God's commandments, all of His precepts, blamelessly. Ninduta ang nga description, righteous in the eyes of God, obedient to the point of being blameless. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. My dear friends, for me, this particular detail is countercultural. How often have you heard of people justifying their crimes, justifying their sinfulness, justifying their immoral choices by using their limitations in life? I can't go to church because of this and because of that. I managed to commit that because of this, because of that. I ended up doing it because of this and because of that. As if poverty, as if tragedy, as if unfortunate circumstances in our lives can become noble justifications for committing that which is displeasing in the eyes of God. Consider Elizabeth and Zechariah. Their situation was truly tragic. Imagine a priest at the service of the Lord, yet having God's disfavor for having no child, yet they continued trusting in the Lord and 
obeying His commandments. My dear friends, this is a challenge for all of us. No matter what our predicaments in life, we are enjoined to trust in the will of God, to obey God and His commandments, especially bearing in mind that God does not have any evil intentions for us. His plans for us are truly for our good and for our salvation. Yes, He may allow tragedies in our lives. He may allow something which the world would consider unfortunate. But He will never in any way allow our ultimate destiny to be in peril for as long as we obey Him, as for, as, for as long as we remain faithful to Him. Take note, ultimate destiny. And so in our effort to obey God, we may end up getting sick still. We would still have tragedies. We may even die. We may lose our livelihood. But even through this, we continue to hold on to God like Job. Be assured that God has us in his heart. Yes, obedience to God is quite easy when things go our way. But obedience becomes doubly difficult when things are not rosy. When not everything comes up roses for you and for me. But if we continue to obey, because we believe that God is love and He knows what is best for us, Jeremiah 29, 11, then be assured, just like Elizabeth and Zechariah, God will make a strategic intervention in your life. But take note, according to His perfect timing and in accordance with His specific terms. Amen. The birth of the precursor announced the imminent coming of the Savior. Let the neighbors and relatives, like the neighbors and relatives of Zechariah and Elizabeth, let us rejoice in the Lord who visits us in peace. Lord, make our hearts rejoice in you. Lord, make our hearts rejoice in you. Lord, purify our hearts that we may offer you praise fitting and fitting service, we pray. Lord, Lord make, make our, our hearts rejoice, rejoice in you. Let us rejoice in the happiness of our neighbors and be near to them in their sorrows, we pray. Lord, Lord make, make our, our hearts rejoice, rejoice in you. Bless families who gather together at Christmas and renew their love, solidarity, and support for one another, we pray. Lord, make our hearts rejoice in you. Let us be grateful for the gift of children and raise them to know, love, and serve you, we pray. Lord, make our hearts rejoice in you. Let us rejoice in the birth of the precursor, for our salvation is near at hand, we pray. Lord, make our hearts rejoice in you. May the servant of God, the venerable Chofelo Kamomot Bishop, be raised to the glory of the altars. We pray. Lord, in our hearts, rejoice in you. Loving Father, may we be ready with lighted lamps to meet your beloved Son at his coming and rejoice in your countless blessings through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. you praise father most holy for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love you formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone the creator he might have dominion over all creatures and when through disobedience he had lost your friendship you did not abandon him to the domain of death but you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you Time and again you offer them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an everlasting covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, consecrated men and women everywhere, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all those who seek you with sincere hearts. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a merciful Father that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. With one voice and one heart, we now dare to call God Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are we who are invited to partake of the sacred banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O oh my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet our dearly beloved Savior, your Son, at His coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this juncture in our liturgy, we now pray in the silence of our hearts for our brothers and sisters who are sick and all those who are weighed down by the different tragedies and problems in life. O God, who will that our infirmities be borne by your only begotten Son to show the value of human suffering, listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, distress, old age, problems, and other afflictions may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed and are united to Christ in his suffering for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pro nobis sancta dei genitrix. Oremus. Omnipotent sempiterni Deus, qui gloriosi virginis matris Mariae corpus et animam, ut dinium fili tui habitaculum ifici mereretur, Spiritus Sancto Comperante preparasti, da ut coius commemorazione leitamur, eius pia intercessione ab instanti buhus malis, et a morte perpetua liberemur, per iumdem Christum Dominum nostrum. Divinum auxilium maniat semper nobisco. The Eucharist is offered. Go forth glorifying God in your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Take care. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family, 